Welcome to this webinar where you joined to hear about how you can link tree planting to your university and especially about the case study of Avans University in cooperation with Life Terra Foundation. In the next 45 minutes or so, you're going to hear about this uh, case study. And uh, before we go over to the presenters that we have lined up for you, I'm going to briefly explain to you how this works. My name is Luke Mulling. I'm the moderator of today. And at your fingertips, we have different interactivity options. So both for the live audience, but also for the people that are watching the recording, we'd like to interact with you. So how can you do that? First of all, on the right top, most importantly, you can write your questions at any time. So you see a tab called questions, and there you can write them. Um, we will be taking care of the questions at the end. Um, now, um, also for the people that are watching the recording, you can also do that. So you can also write your questions there. Of course, we cannot answer them live. However, we will be coming back to them um, probably by email because we can come back to you then after the session. So do take advantage. What else do we have? We also have a chat. In the chat, you can briefly write uh, maybe where you're from um, and maybe your interest in this project. So that will be great to hear already and interact a little bit with you. We also will be opening up a poll. So do take uh, an eye on that, especially later towards the end of the session. And last but not least, just a little fun part to make it fun for everyone even more. We do have emoticons at the bottom of the screen. You see an emoticon so you can give your reaction. I, exactly, I see already someone found it, great. Just to give a little bit of feedback to especially presenters to keep them engaged and uh, yeah, having fun and knowing that there is the audience listening to them and being present. Now, without further ado, um, because you didn't join in to hear from me, of course, you did uh, join in to listen to the three presenters as we have um, a student with us, Lisa Heimans. You will kick it off in a second. After that, we will hear from uh, Sarah Wilton, the director of Avance University of Applied Sciences. And after that, we will go over to Limor Noach, who is the director of Life Terra Foundation. They will introduce themselves briefly as well, but let's go ahead with Lisa and uh, hear from her about her experience with this project. Good luck. Uh, unmute yourself, please. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Lisa Heyman. I study at Avance University of Applied Sciences in Breda. And a while ago, I did have a dream. I wanted to create a forest and I wanted to do that with students. Uh, but most of these uh, uh, tree plantings, they're kind of impersonal. And, you know, you can plant a tree once and then completely forget about it. But so when I speak uh, of this project, I speak on behalf of me and my uh, student partner, Nick Dembo. So we decided we want to make it personal. How would we do that? How could we make something that reaches the students personally um, by uh, planting it physically or giving it to them, but then also that it can stay with them uh, when they will uh, go further in life because the tree in itself is a very, very beautiful symbol symbology for uh, growing after what you've experienced at your university. So how, how did we do that? I'm part of the Green Office. And for you guys that don't know, Green Offices are uh, part of a nationwide um, organization in the Netherlands, where the Green Office are through and for students to help make their universities more sustainable. So that's in awareness campaigns, activities, and brainstorm sessions, for example. So the idea was to make a tiny forest, uh, which is nice because it aids in biodiversity, cleans the air, and helps with climate adaptation. But like I said, we wanted to make it personal. How though? Well, Life Terra, they have this amazing thing to link your tree with your GPS, meaning that you know on your webpage where it, where it will be. So in 30 years, you will still know and uh, that was awesome. The symbology, 
um, the tree that's going to be personalized, uh, but how bring it to our students, how to bring it to our fellow students. Well, we were thinking the best way to do so is to tap into known uh, money pockets. So what budgets are already known? And for what we knew is the graduation gift. Each student of Avance gets a graduation gift because it has been a special time for four or more years you've shared it together. And then they give you a gift. So what we thought, let's make combine these two ideas, our dream and this budget to create the graduation tree. And so we did. And I want to share some do's and don'ts about the process and the project as well. First of all, how did this come through? We shared our idea. That's the first do, share it. Don't be selfish or don't doubt yourself that it's a bad idea. Even this idea, it's not new, but because so many people believed in it, it was shared to other people. Life Terra found us. Uh, we found more support through the green office, through Avance itself. Um, and also the more people that give their opinion to your project, the more it can grow, the more details it will get and maybe even more sustainable in the long run. Come back to that later. And I just want to mention again, capitalize on existing budgets. Uh, that will, for us, that was the winning factor. Um, and then if you want to try this at your university, please don't try this all by yourself. If you don't have a green office, uh, that's too bad, but it doesn't mean that you cannot start this yourself. Try to find the right people and the right expertise. So people that are good with communication, try to attach them to this project. People that are good with innovative ideas and the process, try to get them along. Please don't try this yourself by yourself. It's awesome when it's in a team, trust me. And also um, we got a lot of help from our project leader at the green office and it did help that he knew who had those expertises. Um, so if you don't have a green office, try to find that person within your university that knows many, many people. And uh, like a little bit from experience, it was hard to cater to everybody's needs. Uh, so for us, this is a pilot project. We learned so, so, so many things, but when it becomes bigger, then it's better to maybe not make everything personalized for every study program. So let me wrap up here for a second. So um, we had a dream to have a personalized way to reach my fellow students in uh, sustainability awareness creation, uh, but also uh, simultaneously carrying out climate action. Uh, and it came through together with Green Office, Nick Dambo, Avance University, and many, many more. And Life Terra, we reached this goal. And so with Green Office as a platform and uh, our university that believed in this idea, who embraced it, uh, it makes me happy to say that uh, Avance will adopt the graduation tree as its own. So I'd like to introduce you to Sarah Wilton. Yes, thank you, Lisa. I'm going to interrupt briefly because we actually have a video to show, some video footage before we go over to Sarah. So I'm going to share with you and show you this little video to give you some more yeah, life to and, and 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 videos to see what this means in real life. How it's been. Here we go. Here worden vandaag 4000 bomen geplant door Avans alumni. Die zijn net afgestudeerd en die kunnen dat moment van afstuderen markeren door een boom te planten. Zij gaan verder in hun leven. Zij gaan verder zich ontwikkelen. Ze gaan groeien en die boom groeit met hen mee. En dan denk je, ja, één zo'n boom, maar het zijn er 4000. En zo creëren we een avansbos. Wat we wel wilden, is ons medestudenten een soort bewustwording bijbrengen. En daarnaast iets wat heel erg blijvend was. Maar ook geld ergens vandaan halen. Dus we hebben slim nagedacht, waar is al geld? Dus bij dat afstudeercadeau. Wat gaan we daarvan doen? We maken daar een boom van. Al dus de afstudeerboom. De boom die groeit dus verder met de student als hij of zij een carrière gaat maken. En dat is zo leuk, dus je kan over tien jaar kan je terugkomen en is die boom ook veel verder gegroeid. Je bent zelf heel anders in je leven gaan staan. Ja, misschien dat je wel kinderen hebt, kan je met je kinderen hier naartoe komen om die boom te komen bezoeken. 
Superleuk. Vandaag is echt een hele bijzondere dag voor Live Terra, omdat er zoveel samenkomt. Het enthousiasme van de studenten om hier een boom te planten. En dat is natuurlijk ontstaan vanuit een samenwerking met Avans, met de gemeente, met de provincie. En waar we echt kunnen laten zien wat er gebeurt als je de handen ineens slaat. Ja, als je ziet wat hier vandaag gebeurt, dan word ik alleen maar heel erg blij van omdat wij graag in Den Bosch willen dat er ook eigenaarschap is van de natuur. En wij kunnen wel grond ter beschikking stellen, zoals vandaag ook. Maar dan is het wel fijn dat daar ook mensen zich eigenaar voelen van zo'n bos. Als Den Bosch hebben we gezegd, wij willen twee keer zoveel bomen aanplanten dan dat we de vier jaar in de bestuursperiode daarvoor hebben gedaan. Hey, studententijd is natuurlijk een enorme belangrijke tijd in je ontwikkeling. En de meeste van je normen en waarden die ontwikkel je op dat moment. En ik denk dat zo'n boomplanten daar enorm goed bij past. We zijn met Live Terra de samenwerking aangegaan omdat Live Terra echt de specialist en de partij is om dit soort projecten mee op te pakken. Live Terra heeft een grote opdracht gekregen van de Europese Commissie om de ontbossing tegen te gaan. En heeft ons geadviseerd, ook over de biodiversiteit. Hoe pak je zoiets aan? Welke bomen waar? De partij om mee samen te werken. Voor Live Terra is het heel belangrijk dat het niet alleen maar om bomenplanten gaat. Het gaat ook wel echt om bewustwording rondom klimaatverandering. We hebben een fantastisch onderwijsprogramma voor, voor kinderen van 8 tot en met 14 jaar. Maar door de samenwerking met Avans bereiken we ook weer een nieuwe doelgroep. En dat zijn de studenten en de alumni. De lange termijn visie van een opleiding is dat je een leven lang leert. Uh, en dat wordt ook steeds duidelijker. En daarom is het goed dat wij als Avans ook aangehaakt blijven. En onze alumni ook uitnodigen om terug te komen. Ik heb het op papier gezien. Ik was enthousiast. Uh, het hele college was enthousiast. We hebben het omarmd. En nu sta ik hier met mijn laarzen aan. Uh, en zie ik dat de echte eerste kluiten, uh, de bomen, geplant worden. Ja, dat is geweldig. Life Terra is co-financed by, by the European Commission, Commission through the Life Program. Through the life program. I think it's uh, up to me now, uh, although I see a bunch of commercials now. No, they're gone. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm uh, Sarah Wilton, part of the managing board of Avans uh, University of Applied Sciences. And I'm really happy to uh, share our experiences and our tips and tricks for you. And happy that you joined this seminar webinar. Um, and it was only two weeks ago, uh, I think a little over two weeks, uh, that the Glasgow um, conference, the United Nations Climate Change Conference was closed. And it was closed uh, by the chairman tearing up. He was in tears and he said, sorry, I apologize, deeply sorry for the end result of that conference. And uh, a pessimist would then also say, oh, well, that was not such a great success. But an optimist, and I think I'm one of those, uh, could also say there was a lot of attention uh, for this conference, for the climate change uh, initiative, for sustainability, for corporate social responsibility. And I think that's also what we see in our own world. Um, not only our managing board has an agenda and an ambition on uh, the field of corporate social responsibility and sustainability, our students have those ambitions. And actually that was what happened. Uh, what Lisa told you was all true, of course, and she's also being modest. Uh, because what she did together with Nick, I think she really inspired us and not only inspired us, she also made us feel humble. And why do I use the word humble? Because I think uh, actually it should not be the case that students uh, have the great, they should have the initiative, but managing boards of companies, of um, corporate, private, public uh, companies should take those initiatives themselves. So Lisa and Nick really uh, gave us also a form of a wake up call. We need to act and we need to do things and if you need to act you need to start small and you need to start where you can start and both uh, Lisa and Nick inspired us to do so and indeed what she said it's awesome if you team up and you need to team up so Life Terra really was our partner as you could also see in the movie clip 
left our advised us and uh, without them we wouldn't have succeeded and we wouldn't have seen all those super super enthusiastic and energetic alumni planting their trees um and that was also for for us as uh, managing board of avance university um i think the icing on the cake that you combine with this uh project not only the compensation uh, of uh, CO2, but also um, the sustainable relationship with your alumni. And that's really important to us. So I see for this project really, really great, great payoff, spin off um, in the field of a sustainable, more sustainable world, in the field of a connection, lifelong connection with your alumni. And also in the field of co-creation, uh, I think something a lot of universities and other um, public uh, companies are striving for the co-creation with the outside world, with the private. And also, uh, we just had a lot of fun. And the idea that in 10 years time, there's 100,000 trees, that's also significant it's not only a fun project like okay we can show that we did something it is significant and that i think is is very very important to mention to you so my my wholehearted advice would be take this to the heart think about it and discuss it with your managing board go indeed follow the money i think that's a really good advice from lisa um, because where there's there's funds, there is also um, most of the times there's fun, and seek the cooperation with parties like Life Terra. Um, and with regards to sustainability, of course, it's not only the uh, advanced forest we have. We have the topic of sustainability in our research. We have a couple of specific research fields. Um, we have uh, incorporated the sustainable development goals in our uh, curricula um, and also in our daily operations, you know, uh, recycling rainwater, recycling our uh, cups, um, the lightning, etc. Lighting. Uh, the main and, and far most, utmost uh, report, uh, important lesson for us is do things that are visible because it's all about the mindset. So combine the, the, the core corporate sustainable, corporate uh, social responsible uh, events and initiative with really things that you can see and the, the things that are visible. And I think this initiative is an excellent um, example of an initiative one can employ relatively easy you need funds and you need some some parties to co-create uh, with and it's visible and it's really inspiring for a lot of people and Limor Noach the uh, director of Life Terra will now um, well show you a bit of her world and her um, I think ideas and convictions of this beautiful project and I would like to give the word to Limor, and I'm very happy to take your questions uh, when we continue. Thank you, and over to you, Limor. Thank you so much, uh, Sarah. Thank you. Uh, first, I really would like to welcome everybody uh, to this webinar because I've, I've just looked at, uh, at the participants and I see that there are so many people from uh, all around uh, Europe and even further than that. So uh, thank you all for joining us and uh, we really hope to inspire you. Actually, I hope that you are already inspired by these wonderful stories uh, of uh, Lisa and uh, Sarah. Um, I would like uh, to tell you a little bit more about Life Terra, the Life Terra Foundation. Uh, so that you have a little bit of background information about who we are and what we do. So um, about Life Terra, well, we have this crazy and fantastic dream of planting 500 million trees by 2025. And uh, the, the number of 500 million is a symbol for every citizen uh, within the EU. Um, and for us, I think it's very important to say that it's not just about planting a tree. It's really about restoring our connection with the earth and to enable people to take impactful climate action. 
we all know that we have to do something, but sometimes it feels like this really big problem uh, that we have uh, around climate change, and we really don't know, okay, where to start, what to do, how can I help? So we want to make that very tangible and very nearby for everybody. Uh, and we do that by being tree planting. And um, we actually do much more than that because we also have a fantastic education program that I will tell you about in a moment. And we have uh, it, uh, developed a wonderful technology to uh, monitor the trees that you plant. So why trees? Well, um, planting trees is actually something that's so accessible for everybody. It's a very effective way to capture carbon. It's not very expensive. And uh, as you know, well, it's something that everyone, everybody can do right now and uh, close by to your home. So there are many uh, reasons why we chose to focus on trees. Of course, they also have uh, a very important role in restoring ecosystems. They, are very, they have a very important role in um, restoring biodiversity. Um, and they have a very positive impact on people, both physically and mentally. Um, but the most important thing, I think, is that it's so accessible for everybody to plant trees. And of course, uh, <laughs> I have to add to that, that it's also a lot of fun to plant trees. Uh, it, it, it actually enables you uh, to do so many things. Uh, just from your organization's point of view, uh, it is, I think, very important to strengthen your brands by uh, working together with organizations like LifeTerra. Sometimes it's something that you can do in, on a very local level. Uh, of course, we are depending on uh, availability of land and access to land where we can plant trees. Uh, but most of the times we're able to find good locations to plant trees uh, in a relatively local uh, area to the, to the institutions. So that makes it very accessible uh, to plant trees in your own surroundings, in your own community. And as we have noted before, we developed a technology where you can actually monitor and track your trees. Of course, it helps you to reduce your carbon footprint and create a very positive impact on the community. So um, it also helps you to contribute to the sustainable development goals, as you can see on this slide, the goals that, that we support. Um, and I think the most important thing is that you're actually creating a legacy that matters. It's something that's here to stay. So what makes us unique? We have the knowledge to plant the right tree in the right place. We work together in a consortium of partners, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. Uh, and we uh, have all this knowledge and expertise of these partners to help us on these topics. So it's very important to decide for each piece of land what trees should be planted there in order to really create a biodiverse and sustainable new nature. So we have a lot of expertise on that. Uh, we also developed, as I said before, the um, a technology to monitor each tree planted, uh, as you can see here on the right hand side. So if you go uh, with us into the field and you start planting your trees, then you're actually able to attack them with your own mobile phone. And uh, you can see them, you can find them back in your dashboard and you can see the exact geolocation. Uh, then we also developed a fantastic educational pack to educate future generations on sustainability and climate change. It's actually, uh, we offer that for free for schools, uh, it's for children uh, in the age of 8 to 14. And of course, it helps to build uh, communities because planting trees really impacts uh, communities in a very broad sense. So I already uh, told you that we work together with uh, many partners and they all, all have their own expertise, uh, which makes us very strong as a whole. Uh, so we have knowledge and network in implementation, uh, in, on the, in the field of technology, education, and in communication. So for instance, we have communication partners in different countries within the EU that really help us to raise awareness on this topic but we also have uh, very smart uh, partners that know exactly uh, how to monitor each tree that we have planted. So all this expertise and knowledge comes together in this project and that, that makes it uh, a unique pro project in its size and in its, uh, the impact that we can actually have. 
And we are very proud that we uh, got support of the European Commission through the LIFE program and uh, they are uh, supporting us to enroll this project and bring it to a success. So what do we want from you? <laughs> Well, we actually want you to also get involved and help us reach that goal of 500 million trees. How does it work? Well, uh, we take care of securing a planting site uh, and we try to make it as close to your university as, possi uh, as possible. Of course, we provide uh, the trees and the logistics of getting the trees and the sites, the tools that are necessary to plant the trees. Uh, we are there to explain how to properly plant a tree and we are there to guide the whole uh, planting event and uh, your students or your alumni or staff will really get their hands dirty in a fun way. They will spend, spend time outside with their colleagues while making a meaningful, meaningful contribution to ecosystem restoration and your university will gain access to a personalized dashboard where you can track the trees planted and I want to show you an example of that in a moment. Um, of course, there are many different ideas on uh, uh, greening your university. We really like the idea of Avance, where they uh, give the tree to all the graduates. You could, of course, also use it as a welcome gift to new students. Um, it enables you to organize planting events and let students organize their own planting events and also become Terra leaders. So for us, Terra leaders are the people that are motivated to also organize their own planting events in their community. community. Uh, you can compensate your students' carbon footprints by planting trees with Life Terra. And of course, you can give your students the opportunity to reconnect with nature. And we are open to any other ideas that you have uh, to green your university. And we're actually very curious to hear about your ideas uh, on this. So this is the dashboard that uh, I was talking about earlier. So here you can see the advanced university dashboard and you see the location of the trees where they have been planted, 4,000 trees. And on the right hand side, you see all the individual trees that were tagged. Uh, so uh, apart from the advanced uh, dashboard that you see right here, every student has a login to their own uh, platform and they can track their own tree and they can see exactly where it has been planted. So that's really something unique that we got uh, to offer. So we would like to ask you to join us with your ideas to green your university or, or any other ideas that you might have. And uh, well, we really hope to team up in order to reach our goal and plant 500 million trees throughout Europe. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Limor, and thank you all of you, Sarah and or Lisa as well, of course, for your great explanations already. Now is the moment we go to uh, the questions. So this is the chance for the audience that has joined in, as we already heard from uh, various countries. Um, so great to see everybody joining in. Um, and let's go ahead. Um, we have some questions already. Lea is asking, is there enough space in the Netherlands to continue this initiative for decades to come? And also um, for every educational institution to adopt this project? What is your long-term vision of this project? Well, that's, that is a very interesting and relevant question. So thank you uh, for that. Um, well, of course, the Netherlands does not have uh, the same uh, possibilities that other countries around us have in the EU. Uh, for now, uh, yes, we do have enough. We work together with a lot of organizations within the Netherlands that give us access to land. And uh, also in the Netherlands, you see that there are a lot of ambitions to uh, green uh, the country. Uh, so right now we do have enough access to uh, to offer, but I agree that in the long term, term this really might be a, a challenge. Um, uh, so we know for now that we have a lot of connections, for instance, in Portugal, in Spain, in Greece, where we still see, also in the Czech Republic, where we still see that there's a lot of space uh, for re reforestation. Uh, and on the short term, in the, we're fine also in the Netherlands, and on the long term, I agree that this, this could be a challenge. Okay, great. Thank you for your question. I hope that answered it to your satisfaction. Otherwise, let us know, Lea. Um, Marie has a question. In which countries do you have this initiative? That's also a good question. So uh, we're active throughout uh, the whole of the EU. We do have several focus countries where uh, we have 
uh, well, we are also really active already ourselves. So uh, right now we are active in the Netherlands, in Belgium, France, Spain, Portugal, uh, Greece, Italy. Uh, and um, we are actually also uh, active in Germany, in the Czech, Re Czech Republic. So uh, we are expanding. So please, if you have any concrete questions, if uh, we have connections in your country as well and possibilities to plan, please uh, send us an email. And we do work with partners throughout the whole of Europe. So we always find a way to make it work. Great, thank you. Good to hear. Um, Reggi, or Reggie, if I say that right, um, has a question. What do you believe was the deciding factor for you as a board of directors to re really embrace the idea? Uh, and what would be your main advice to people at other institutions who would like to convince their board of directors to also embrace and support such an initiative? So this is directed at Avanza University, I assume. Yes, I'll, I'll uh, take that question. Um, I think what Lisa uh, mentioned uh, was indeed part of the uh, deciding fact. There is not one deciding factor when you make such a decision. Uh, we all know that managing boards get um, funding requests on a weekly basis. And as Lisa illustrated, this was a request that already fitted into existing money pockets, as she mentioned it. And that was very smart. Um, but not only that, it was also an initiative, as I tried to, to explain, that really uh, shook us up. We, we thought, wow, this is, this is fantastic. This is tangible. Uh, it's sustainable. Uh, we can mark a very important moment, a milestone, so to speak, in people's lives, in the lives of our students, the, the graduation. And the and the the the, the metaphor um, even of growing uh, when you graduate it's a milestone uh, and it's also a moment where you develop further where you grow further and and a tree also does that so and that that was the beauty of this concept so I think it really not only there 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 was funding uh, but you never know but I I. I think we would have also uh, embraced it without that existing funding. However, I truly uh, admire uh, Lisa's analytical skills. It helps tremendously to get a seat at the table uh, when you propose something with a solution uh, included. And that's what Lisa and Nick did. And obviously their energy and their enthusiasm uh, was, was, was fantastic. And also the tangibility, I think that, that, that makes it really, it's so tangible. Uh, it's such a great idea. I, I'm, I'm trying uh, not to be overly enthusiastic because you might think it's all scripted, but it isn't. It, it, it's just a fantastic idea because of those elements, the tangibility, it's it's a real significant CO2 compensation project. And it's it's something where you can align a story, and, and for us, that's the alumni story, with growth. So that, uh, Reggie, I hope answers your question. If not, then let us know. <laughs> Now, if I if I may, I I, yeah, I would sure. like to add uh, to that that what I found for me what was really uh, moving me that day is that a, a lot of alumni came back that day to plant trees with us, and a lot of students found each other and they had not met each other before, and they worked together on planting trees in the field, and they had just had so much fun. They got connected with each other, and uh, the value of that is just yeah for me priceless. So it gives you so much more. Uh, than just planting trees and compensating your carbon footprint. It's really also about connecting with each other, connecting with nature, working together outdoors. And uh, well, that's something that's very valuable these days. And for me uh, to add something maybe towards the green offices as well. Sometimes we might think in our green bubble, oh, everybody wants to do this idea. But we have to be reminded that the ideas can be so great, but Sometimes if they are gonna be a lot of work for other people, uh, they might not succeed. So what we did, we, we took upon us a lot of work mm -hmm. to make it easier for other people to adopt the idea, to make sure like, oh, 
oh yeah, this is actually a great decision. It has so many benefits over the other one, other gifts that are already great, but why not choose this one? So we made it so um, appealing I think that uh, what Sarah said, all these uh, benefits and positive things, but also we made it easy. And I think for climate action, uh, making things easy for other people, you will get so many more people on board. Great, thank you, Lisa, for that addition. I think uh, that was, well, very good and uh, inspiring words from every one of you and great question, thank you. Um, next question. Um, is from Shen, and Shen is asking, is this initiative also open to the public? Well, the Life Terra initiative, yes, it is also open to the public. We actually, if you're interested, please contact us to see how we can work together uh, and uh, see what we can do. So we do organize also citizen plantings in different uh, places throughout Europe. And of course, if you're interested, you can activate a local school or your local community and uh, see what's possible. So uh, please contact us and uh, we would love to work together with you. Great. Thank you very much, Limor. Um, later, actually, I will uh, share a link where you can sign up also on the newsletter from Life Terra. So if you want to, you know, be uh, informed about this, well, not only this project, but what Life Terra is doing and uh, find out more that would probably be a good start to do so. Um, Lea has another question. What uh, kind of trees do, does Life Terra typically use? Is there attention to native trees and diversity? Yes, so for us it's very important uh, uh, to always plant different species of trees. So we try to at least plant eight different species of trees to really stimulate biodiversity. Uh, and of course, we do use the expertise and, uh, that we have uh, from our partners to make a planting plan up front, really see, okay, where are we going to plant? What trees are needed here to create uh, that biodiversity? So uh, for us, it's one of the most important uh, things. So that's why we always say plant the right tree in the right place. Perfect. Thank you, Limor. Um, next question from Zreji to Limor directed. Um, you now have an education uh, program for kids age eight to 14. Do you also consider to develop something similar for high school students as well as for students in higher education? Um, adding that it might be an opportunity to create something like a continuous learning line in that way. Well, that's, that's an interesting idea, Reggie. Uh, thank you for uh, coming up uh, with that idea. Uh, so right now we're rolling out educational program for kids uh, aged 8 to 14. Um, but uh, we might also develop something uh, in the future for high school students. It's not on our plan for the short term, but I agree with you that it's really interesting uh, to create a learning line. Um, we do try to involve uh, high school students where possible. Uh, in coming up uh, with ideas, for instance, for crowdfunding. We just had a really nice student, a 13-year-old boy, who decided to do crowdfunding uh, at his school with his friends and his family to uh, 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 gift as many trees as possible. So he's coming out to plant with his family and friends and his school friends. So that's really inspiring. Uh, and that also gives us the opportunity to bring that story to the world and inspire other people. Uh, but in terms of an educational program, we don't have that uh, yet uh, planned for the short term. Okay. Thank you very much, Limor. Silke is asking, uh, how many trees need to be planted to compensate the energy that is used for the dashboard? Oh, that's a good question. I cannot uh, uh, answer, uh, give you an answer right now. So uh, uh, we will have to calculate uh, that. But it's, yeah, it's interesting, of course, uh, to know that. Sorry, I cannot uh, answer that right away. If you're interested, send us an email and we'll calculate it and let, let you know. Okay. You know, we take an average, maybe that's interesting to tell. We do uh, uh, calculate always an average. So uh, we always say, that, uh, we, we calculate it in a, uh, in a way that we say, for every thousand trees over 40 years, they will capture about 200 tons of CO2. Uh, and we know that that's, uh, uh, well, it, it is a rough way of counting to 
So all the trees that we plant, I mean, of course, it differs. Northern Europe differs from Southern Europe. The uh, different tree species, they all capture different uh, amounts of CO2. So it is really an average uh, and it is an estimation. But that's uh, actually the estimation that's, that we use to calculate. Okay. Thank you, Limor. Um, question from Schoenerald um, is if you're also active in non-EU countries. So we are active in non-EU countries through partnerships. We don't plan there ourselves, but we partner up with different organizations. Uh, actually, as we speak, we have a big event with a company that works uh, on a global level. So their wish was also to plant outside of the EU. And uh, we have uh, great partnerships with uh, uh, parties that plant there, uh, really from, the, from Canada till Africa. Uh, and we use those partnerships to work together to, uh, to reach that goal. Great, thank you very much. Um, before we go to the next question, um, we'll be sending the link shortly. Um, but also, I'd like to mention that we have a polling uh, live. So I see already a lot of people have answered it. Um, so we had a brief polling to build, know a little bit more about your situation, if you've planted trees yourself, if you know if your university is taking climate action. And we're launching another question uh, right now. So. With that, um, I'd like to just point out, if you have to leave, um, do let us know still your feedback, please. And by the way, this um, works for both the live audience, but also for the people that are watching the recording. So you all can participate. So we'd like to hear from all of you. Great. Um, next question, Silke is asking, can you explain the financial aspects? So who gives uh, who gives whom approximately how much money? What is the support by the EU? Can you say something about this? Yeah, so we try to really uh, work together with different parties when we plant trees. So in the example of Avance, we work together with the municipality, uh, the province, and uh, with Avance as an institute. Uh, so um, what we do is that we um, ask support from the municipality to give us access to land or from the province and uh, Avance uh, uh, pays us a certain amount per tree and this enables us also to organize those planting events because they're very uh, of course time consuming uh, to organize. Uh, we also offer uh, the materials for the planting uh, so uh, at the end uh, Avance pays Life Terra uh, an amount per tree and I think it's very transparent. We have a minimum of uh, 1,000 trees in order to really organize an event. So in the case of Avance, we, plant, we planted 4,000 trees for this first event. So uh, the minimum is 1,000 trees and the cost are six euros per tree. And that enables us to organize the event for you and to make sure that there are enough materials and that the trees are there. And that of course, uh, the right trees are ordered and uh, that we uh, plant them in a responsible way uh, and of course, we make agreements with the landowners about maintenance, and uh, you will also get uh, access to our technical platform so that you have access to your dashboard and everybody probably can localize their own trees. So if you're also yeah. wondering uh, how it was for the process for from Avance, we indeed have the tree for six euros, but then also what we offered the, the graduates up front was a certificate. And the certificate was um, the announcement, hey, congratulations with your graduation. Uh, from Avance, you're receiving this tree that you can plant yourself. And then we have a QR code linking to the sign up. Uh, so we have some costs for a certificate. And then also, of course, for the event, like Limor just mentioned, it was an awesome event, but we have to think about the catering, uh, the tent, because uh, mind you, the tree planting is mostly from November till March, because that's the season for planting. So you need to think a little bit about um, being covered, may it rain and some maybe some heaters or some soup in between like what we did. So we would calculate about 10, uh, 15 euros uh, per graduation tree, in case you were wondering. Yeah, and I would like to add to that as well. Um... And the, the existing graduation gift at, at Avance University uh, costs 15 euros per uh, student. 
So as, as mentioned earlier, uh, this was for us budget neutral, um, but also sustainable and also maybe as an inspiration to others that um, you may do this in, in return of something else, but you can also say, well, we do this and we stop another project that's not sustainable or less sustainable. So uh, that made it interesting for us. And we think that planting a tree is a long-term event and um, it grows with you, as I said earlier uh, in the webinar. Um, and it has more value than the um, sort of the cliche-ish uh, pencil or the cliche-ish uh, binder with all kinds of uh, beautiful things in, in there which are beautiful gifts when you graduate. I will not uh, say anything negative about that, but the, as was also indicated earlier, the energy that it brings to plant your own graduation tree is I think second to none. Uh, and in our case, uh, budget neutral. Great. Thank you very much for those insights. Um, I hope that helps the audience and also Silke in your question. Thank you very much. Uh, next question um, from Anna. How many species are usually planted? Yes, so um, we always try to plant with at least eight different species to, uh, to really contribute to biodiversity, uh, but it really depends on the land. Sometimes we even plant with 15 different species, sometimes with six, but uh, as I said before, for us, it's really important uh, to create a biodiverse forests and uh, to use different species that really fit into that specific uh, location. So we really want to create long-term uh, biodiverse nature. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, Stein is wondering, what is the size per tree? Um, I've seen saplings and also trees that already have a developed root system. What can you say about that? Yeah, so that also differs uh, per location and it differs uh, also what the land needs at different locations. So mostly we plant with uh, pretty small saplings, uh, actually, because uh, they will root in a stronger way than uh, trees that are already uh, developed. Um, but for instance, now with the Avance project, we used uh, a little uh, big, bigger uh, saplings because we planted there in clay uh, land. So we needed to plant uh, saplings that were not too small in order to make sure that they will survive. So again, you know, it, this is really um, tailor-made uh, tailor planting plants that really differs per, loca per location, but we try to use uh, young saplings. Okay, great. Thank you. And seen by the thumbs up, he's happy with that answer as well. Uh, Reggie is asking, how do the Avance alumni now stay involved in the growth of their trees? And will this also be incorporated in an alumni uh, strategy in the future? For example, in organizing, uh, revisiting events with the same group to see how the trees are growing, et cetera. Um, what can you say about that? I think this is uh, a question uh, for, for me. Um, the last bit of your question I did not take, um, and I can't find it in the sure. chat. I'll read it out for yeah. you. The first part is how do the Avanza Lumina stay involved in the growth of the trees? Mm -hmm. And the second question is, um, will this also be incorporated for a possible uh, Lumni's strategy in the future? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Clear. Uh, the involvement is, of course, that you have your own, as, as Lisa also, and I think Limor also explained, your own uh, tag and your own QR code. So you can see your baby grow, basically. So that's how you stay involved. And also, I think Limor can, can elaborate on that, whether uh, you can see also the, the whole forest developed. That, that, those details I do not know. Um, and we do uh, envisage to have this as a, a structural uh, theme in our uh, sustainability ambition and strategy. So yes, the, the second part of your question I can um, positively confirm. Um, you know, and, and we also want to see how it develops. So maybe um, 
yeah, we can do even more. We don't know that yet, but we have, we have just begun. Um, but the the ambition is that we do continue and that we might even scale up. So maybe Limor, if if you can elaborate, if you can, I'm, I'm not sure, uh, on the connection, what what you can see from others in your own uh, uh, environments. That I, those details I do not know. Yeah. So as we said, every student can uh, uh, see his or her uh, own tree uh, in in your personalized dashboard. Uh, and then you can see uh, the dashboard of Avance University. Uh, you can also see it, for instance, per academy. So there are different levels on which you can see how many trees got planted. So uh, yes, indeed, that is a fantastic way to uh, keep connected uh, with the trees. And um, of course, we also uh, are very open to looking at uh, projects where people can actually come back maybe after a year and for us, it can be very, of very much value if people are willing to help us to uh, measure the growth of the trees, look how they're doing, help with a little bit of maintenance. So we're definitely open to uh, to these kind of uh, revisiting events that you were talking about, Reggie. And on a social note, uh, what we didn't uh, know from the beginning, but at the event, alumni were so enthusiastic that they were even starting to have their bottom up initiatives. They they were coming to us. Oh, we need to have a, a reunion in five years. So I think maybe the event in itself is already arising to this occasion. So I think it's a really great idea indeed. Great. Thank you for those additions, uh, Lisa, and for all of your answers. And I hope that uh, took care of that question. And um, we're going to the last uh, questions. Um, we have one more I see from Nicolin. Um, what happens after trees have been planted? Who takes care of the trees when they are planted? And how do you ensure it, they will survive? So um, that's a really good question. Of course, also very important because it's not only about uh, planting the tree, but it's really also about uh, the right maintenance. And uh, of course, there are places and locations where the trees need more maintenance than in other places. Uh, but on average, we really make agreements with all the landowners where we plant trees and they are responsible for maintaining the trees. So that way we make sure uh, that the trees uh, have the, the best, um, well, the best numbers to, to actually also survive in the long term. Uh, on the other hand, of course, we cannot guarantee survival in every uh, case, uh, but we do offer, for instance, if something would happen at a certain location, we do have agreements with landowners that they have um, uh, that they have to replant those trees if something happens to to a large amount of trees. Um, so we are really committed to make sure that the trees are there to last. Great, thank you very much. Now, linking into that question, we actually had another question about. Um, what if the school is willing to partner but lack access to land? You just briefly mentioned something. Does Life Terra have ways of helping uh, helping with getting land? Yes, and I think that this is a very important question because we actually we are the ones who are responsible to find access to land to uh, uh, to land in in near to your educational institution. So we don't expect the school to find the land. Of course, sometimes schools have wonderful connections with the local uh, municipality or with the province and that might be helpful to get in touch with them uh, but it is life terrorist responsibility to find uh, land in the uh, nearby area of your institution great thank you very much and i think that was the last question um no we received another one evia asked just now is there an extra cost for the landowners to manage the trees so no, there are no extra, uh, uh, I mean, they don't have to pay for it. We just ask them to do the maintain, maintenance of the trees. So of course, as I said before, um, several locations, uh, that means that you have to put in a little bit more effort than in other locations. So it really differs. Um, but that's what we ask from the landowners to give us access to the land. And we actually offer them the trees themselves. And of course, uh, that the trees are being planted in the right way. And then from there on, uh, 
they have uh, to take care of the trees, um, but other than that, they don't have extra costs to manage those trees. Okay. Hope that answered your question, Ivia. Otherwise, let us know. We have still a minute or so left uh, for any last questions. So. Uh, do take advantage. Um, also, to, still to um, mention um, that this session has been recorded, so the people are watching this, you can still write your questions through the question tab as well. Um, also, for others that have uh, maybe joined, but maybe later, or they want to re, you know, watch it again or share it, then um, we will be sending you the recording um, shortly after. So you will get it to your email that you signed up with. And um, with that, I think people are already getting thank yous. So yeah, I think that is the right time if we don't have more questions to thank everyone. Um, from my side, I'd like to thank everyone uh, to, for joining. Um, so first of all, the audience, of course, you joined in from different countries. Um, well, we had a very good uh, turn up with a lot of countries in Europe, but also some elsewhere. Great to see. And uh, of course the presenters. So all of you, uh, Lisa, Sarah and Limor, all three of you, great uh, presentation and insights. Um, for my side, I would like to give the floor to one of you, um, Limor, I would say, from Life Terra to uh, conclude the session. And um, yeah, thanks everyone for having joined this webinar. Well, thank you so much, Luke, for making this possible. We really appreciate uh, uh, the help of, of, of you. And uh, it's fantastic that webinars for you supports uh, our goal in this uh, to convey this message. So thank you for that. And uh, well, thank you so much also for Lisa and Sarah for being uh, uh, so willing to share your story and inspiration uh, with all of you and uh, to all the participants. Uh, please do contact us if you're interested in uh, greening uh, the world together with us and we think that this is a wonderful inspiring and connecting way to contribute to climate change and we really hope to work together with you on this in the in the near future thank you so much hier worden vandaag 4000 bomen geplant door avans alumni die zijn net afgestudeerd en die kunnen dat moment van afstuderen markeren door een boom te planten. Zij gaan verder in hun leven, zij gaan verder zich ontwikkelen, ze gaan groeien en die boom groeit met hen mee. En dan denk je, ja één zo'n boom, maar het zijn er 4000. En zo creëren we een avansbos. Wat je wel wilde is ons medestudenten een soort bewustwording bijbrengen. En daarnaast iets wat heel erg blijvend was, maar ook Geld ergens vandaan halen, dus we hebben slim nagedacht, waar is al geld? Dus bij dat afstudeercadeau. Wat gaan we daarvan doen? We maken daar een boom van, al dus de afstudeerboom. De boom die groeit dus verder met de student als hij of zij carrière gaat maken. En dat is zo leuk, dus je kan over tien jaar kan je terugkomen, dus die boom ook veel verder gegroeid. Je bent zelf heel anders in je leven gaan staan. Ja, misschien dat je wel kinderen hebt, kan je met je kinderen hier naartoe komen om die boom te komen bezoeken. Superleuk. Vandaag is echt een hele bijzondere dag voor Life Terra, omdat er zoveel samenkomt. Het enthousiasme van de studenten om hier een boom te planten. En dat is natuurlijk ontstaan vanuit een samenwerking met Avans, met de gemeente, met de provincie. En waar we echt kunnen laten zien wat er gebeurt als je de handen ineens slaat. Ja, als je ziet wat hier vandaag gebeurt, dan word ik alleen maar heel erg blij van omdat wij graag in Den bos willen dat er ook eigenaarschap is van de natuur. En wij kunnen wel grond ter beschikking stellen, zoals vandaag ook. Maar dan is het wel fijn dat daar ook mensen zich eigenaar voelen van zo'n bos. Als Den bos hebben we gezegd, we willen twee keer zoveel bomen aanplanten dan dat we de vier jaar in de bestuursperiode daarvoor hebben gedaan. Hey, studententijd is natuurlijk een enorme belangrijke tijd in je ontwikkeling. En de meeste van je normen en waarden die ontwikkel je op dat moment. En ik denk dat zo'n boomplanten daar enorm goed uh, bij past. We zijn met Life Terra de samenwerking aangegaan omdat Life Terra echt de specialist en de partij is om uh, dit soort projecten mee op te pakken. Life Terra heeft een grote opdracht gekregen van de Europese Commissie om de ontbossing tegen te gaan. En heeft ons geadviseerd, ook over de biodiversiteit. Hoe pak je zoiets aan? Welke bomen waar? Uh, de partij om mee samen te werken. Voor Life Terra is het heel belangrijk dat het niet alleen maar om bomenplanten gaat. Het gaat ook wel echt om bewustwording rondom klimaatverandering. We hebben een fantastisch onderwijsprogramma voor, voor kinderen van 8 tot en met 14 jaar. Maar door de samenwerking met Avans bereiken we ook weer een nieuwe doelgroep. En dat zijn de studenten en de alumni. 
De lange termijn visie van een opleiding is dat je een leven lang leert. Uh, en dat wordt ook steeds duidelijker. En daarom is het goed dat wij als Avans ook aangehaakt blijven en onze alumni ook uitnodigen om terug te komen. Ik heb het op papier gezien. Ik was enthousiast. Uh, het hele college was enthousiast. We hebben het omarmd. En nu sta ik hier met mijn laarzen aan uh, en zie ik dat de echte eerste uh, kluiten, uh, de bomen, geplant worden. Ja, dat is geweldig. Life Terra is co-financed by the European Commission through Life Programme.